Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video. This week I'm going to turn this into Athena's new custom built boiler that's going to provide us with hot water and heat. If you're new to my channel, this lovely looking boat right here is Athena. I am just shy of four years into a somewhat extensive refit. The end goal is for my fiance Ava and I to be able to move aboard in about a year and start cruising full time. We're gonna spend a lot of time in some cold places and that's where the boiler comes into the picture. We wanna stay warm, comfy and have plenty of hot water. The boiler started out life as a CAD drawing. That drawing got turned into a beautifully laser cut steel. This is like a very manly version of Legos. Hopefully by the end of this week, I'll have built one of these, leak tested it and put the spurs to it for the first time. This is what the boiler looks like in its fully disassembled form. As you can hear, Martin is already tagging together the first few pieces, so I can go ahead and weld in the pipes I just cut. If you're wondering why there are so many pieces here, that's because we're building three of these boilers. It looks like Martin has done more than just tag this together. In fact, he's welded all of the inside seams because once everything is put together, we can't get to those again. And I have very little welding experience. In fact, this will be my very first time MIG or MAG welding. I've done a little bit of tick before, but uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see how this is gonna play out. The pieces of pipe I've cut are gonna slide right into here. I've been informed by my all-knowing welding instructor that it's easiest for me if I go ahead and TIG these in place before I start make or mag welding them in place. Oh! Yeah. 1,5 to 2 mm. 1,5 to 1,5. Yeah, correct. Got it. she is not and there are a few of these pipes that i'm gonna leave for tomorrow for when the honorable mr cement boat guy is here to supervise me again because of course it is super critical that all of this is water tight You might be wondering why I'm going through all of the trouble of building this and there are two reasons for that. One is because I think it's cool and interesting to learn new skills and also because of money. If I compare this DIY version to an off-the-shelf product from a well-renowned European manufacturer, I'm saving somewhere right around 5,000 US dollars by building this myself. It's time for the front, but we might have to persuade the boiler a little bit to make him fit. And just like that, all the welding is done. Or that's to say, we think it's done because of course this thing hasn't been leak tested yet. All holes should now be plugged. So now it's just a matter of crossing our fingers. 
there's going to be a relief valve in the system and that's going to kick in at 1.5 bar. So while testing the boiler, we want to go up to around 2.5 bar just to make sure. So what do you guys think? Is this thing going to leak or not? I'm going to pop out one of those uh, newfangled YouTube voting cards and uh, well, you can let me know. Bear in mind that I, as a complete novice in welding, have done some of these welds here. Some of them are Martins, I'm sure those are not gonna leak, but uh, mine, I don't know. Oh. 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 Oof. Not good. Yep, that was one of my welds that failed right here. You might be able to hear the air leaking out of there. Thusly improved, let's try this again. So far there are four leaks, three of them are my fault and one of them is Martin's fault. So I think we should all just focus on that one. Actually, we don't know if the last one is Martin's fault because I did the weld in the bottom and he did the weld around this big pipe here and there's a leak somewhere in between the two, so... We've found so many leaks that we've stopped counting. Now we've both welded on this thing, so I think we should just agree that it's 50% Martin's fault and 50% my fault. So yeah, let's uh, stick with that. Sometimes humor doesn't travel well over YouTube, so I just want to point out that of course I'm not pointing fingers at Martin here. I'm very grateful for his assistance and for him teaching me new skills, so this is all just a bit of fun. After copious amounts of time spent leak hunting, the border is now sitting at 2.5 bars with no leaks. Next up is to get the burner mounted and put the spurs to this thing. The plate here on the back is just temporarily held in place by these way too long bolts here. We didn't have the right size. This is the mounting doohickey that came with the burner. Finally, we've got a simplified test setup here. This is a simplified version of what the heating system is gonna be like aboard Athena. All that's left to do now is just to flip the switch. But before I do that, let me tell you why I've chosen to go with the DIY version here over some of the alternatives. I mentioned a little earlier in the video that I'm building this spoiler DIY style because I think it's fun and also to save a little bit of money. I'm sure some of you are screaming at your screen right now saying, but Mess, why don't you just buy one of those forced air heaters like the Eberspecker or the Vabastos? Or maybe even go with one of these uh, cheap Chinese knockoffs you can pick up for next to nothing. Now I'm not gonna use a forced air heater because I don't think it's the best option. If you only need to heat your boat for a short period of time, say for weekends or for vacations, something like this cheap Chinese knockoff or one of the major brand name alternatives is probably fine. It's gonna have a nice long lifespan, but if you start running something like this 24 seven, I will bet that you're gonna start having a ton of issues. You might be fine for a while, maybe a year, year and a half, maybe even two years, but these things are built light and cheap. This is not something that's designed to run 24 seven. Sure, you could do it. And I do know full-time liverboards in cold climates that heat their boats using forced air heaters. But the thing is, they're all stuck doing some pretty extensive servicing about every year, every other year it seems, with some pretty expensive parts sometimes. You don't ever see a house heated with a stack of these guys. And there's a reason for that. That's because these are built to be light and small, which is good, but it doesn't make them dependable. Now Athena is a big girl, she can handle a bit of weight, so I'd much rather go with something like the boiler, which is a little bit more of an advanced heat setup that will also give us plenty of hot water for showering while at anchor. The original plan for heating Athena was to use this reflex stove, which is actually kind of a very similar solution, because inside of here there's a little spiral that'll heat water that you can then circulate throughout the boat to evenly distribute the heat. And you can even hook it up to a heat exchanger like this and get hot water for showering. Now the reflex stove is awesome for a low power consumption boat, but Athena is not exactly gonna be low power consumption. So yeah, there are a couple of downsides to a reflex stove. I say that as someone who has lived with the smaller version of this reflex stove as their only source of heat for five years. 
I love the thing, but there are a couple of things that's worth noting. The first one is that this doesn't have a thermostat. So you set the amount of fuel you want to burn on the little regulator on the back of it, but then if the temperature changes during the night, you're either going to wake up freezing or boiling. The second minor annoyance about using a reflex stove is that you can't turn them on and off again. So you can turn it on, but then if you turn it off, you have to wait for the stove to cool down a little bit before you can turn it back on. That means in the spring and the fall, there's gonna be this little awkward period where it's too warm to run this thing, but still too cold not to run it. So that means you have to run it and leave a hatch open, which means you're wasting fuel. The third and final item is a little bit of a nitpick. Now, when it's very gusty outside, you can get downdraft, which results in a puff of diesel smoke inside of the boat, which doesn't exactly smell great, but it only happens when it's very gusty. Because Athena is not gonna be a low power consumption boat, I figured I'd go with something that was gonna bump up the comfort level a little bit. This thing will have a thermostat. It'll also utilize the fuel a little bit better. The efficiency when burning it in one of these is a little bit higher than the reflex stove and also will get rid of those downdrafts. Just to summarize, if you wanna use a forced air heater aboard your boat, that's fine. It's just never gonna be my first choice for a primary heat source. I might slap one of these cheap Chinese knockoffs in Athena just to have a backup, just in case, because they're so cheap, but it's never gonna be my primary heat source. Let's flip the switch and see if this actually works. Now for this little test, I'm using the extraction system here as an exhaust because I don't have the proper exhaust yet. So this is gonna be a lot louder than the setup is gonna be aboard Athena. But uh, let's see. Now the boiler is preheating. It should turn on yep, right there. Yep, right now we are turning dinosaur squeezings into glorious heat. This is the water temperature inside of the boiler. And as you can see, it's going up and up. There are a couple of important safety features missing from my simplified setup. There's the pressure relief valve and also this doohickey, which cuts off power to the burner if the water temperature gets above a set level. The little number you see climbing here, that is simply just a thermostat. It's not really a safety device. The job of this little doohickey is just to make sure that the water temperature inside of the boiler sits around 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. Once we reach 60 degrees Celsius, the burner should turn off and that should be any second now. There we go. For the rest of this test, let's just uh, turn off the extraction system there because that is pretty loud. As you can hear right now, the burner is off and uh, don't mind this little bit of smoke here. That is just some temporary insulation that's not really suited for this purpose, but it was all we had for this little test. But the only noise you should be able to hear right now is from this little radiator. The way this system works is pretty simple. There is a circulation pump back here that pulls hot water from the top of the boiler where it's warmest, circulates it through a radiator that releases nice glorious heat and then pumps the water back into the bottom of the boiler for reheating. In this case, the radiator is the type you'd typically see for water cooling a PC with a couple of 12 volt fans strapped to the back of it. I doubt my mic will even pick up the noise from these two fans. They're pretty quiet, but it's still putting out a pretty decent amount of heat. Now I'm considering two different alternatives for radiators, and hopefully I can show you both of those in next week's video. Of course, in the final setup, there are gonna be a lot more radiators, and there's also gonna be this heat exchanger thrown into the mix so we can have plenty of hot water for the galley and for showering. In the final setup, I'm probably gonna mount this expansion tank here horizontally instead of vertically, just to have the entire thing take up a little bit less room. Now the job of the expansion tank here is simply just to maintain a reasonably level pressure inside of the boiler. As you can see right now, that pressure is sitting right around 1.5 bar. The last notable component in the test setup here is this little automatic air vent. This will bleed the system from any air that's trapped in there, so I don't have to worry about it. This right here is connected to the little temperature controller. If I pull this out and just let it cool down to, I think it's around 55 degrees Celsius it's set for right now, we should hear the burner kick on again. So let's try this. Oh, there we go. For this little simplified test, the diesel tank has been replaced by this little 
plastic bottle filled with dinosaur squeezings. Throughout Athena, the hot water from the boiler is gonna get circulated through this very well insulated PEX tube. The thick insulation will make sure that heat gets delivered to exactly where I want it and that I'm not wasting heat in areas of the boat that I don't wanna heat. I think that's pretty much it for the uh, test of the boiler here. This boiler is based on a design Martin came up with about 10 years ago. And what you're seeing here is sort of the third revision of that design. And they've used the second revision of this design about the cement boat for, I think it's a couple of years now. So yeah, I'd say this is a well-proven design. What you're seeing here is of course the raw boiler, which admittedly looks a little bit rough around the edges. The final product is gonna get wrapped in insulation and have a nice stainless steel enclosure. Once finished, I'm sure this is gonna be a very spiffy looking boiler that's gonna be super reliable and provide us with years and years of nice, glorious heat. A few weeks ago, I moved Athena here to the workshop, which has been awesome for progress. But as you might've noticed in the background here, she's gotten a little bit of company in the shape of one ginormous cement boat. Yesterday, she was carefully lifted out of the cold water, transported to the workshop, and then carefully lifted in place right in front of Athena. The refit I'm doing aboard Athena is certainly somewhat extensive, but the refit the cement boat people are doing is probably bigger. I can hear them hammering away at something, so uh, why don't we brave the elements and pop up for a quick hello. This is like the third weekend in a row with really bad, gusty, rainy weather, so uh, Let's uh, head up. Right now, it is the engine compartment down here that is a work in progress. And there is the honorable Mr. Cement Boat Guy. Hello. <laughs> so this is the inside of the hull of a Ferro cement boat. And uh, right now, they're going to clean all of this up and just uh, refit the entire engine compartment. Complete with replacing, oh, 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 that's uh, Skipper. Yep, that's the cement boat people's dog. Their refit also includes replacing the engine. As you can see, the old one has been removed and the new one is waiting down in the workshop. Martin has informed me that all of the plumbing back here is just temporary. And right there, you can see the boiler, identical to the one I'll have aboard Athena. Whenever I say cement boat, what I really mean is ferro cement boat because there's actually quite a lot of iron reinforcement in the hull that you might just barely be able to make out here. The topic of ferro cement boats is super interesting. It's a way of building boats that were quite popular in Denmark during the 60s, 70s, and maybe the 80s. Since then, not so much, but uh, I think it's a topic we're gonna save for an upcoming video. This week, I actually thought I was gonna start building Athena's new fridge, but then we decided to relocate the fridge to the kitchen island, which means I can't start building the fridge yet because I need to build the giant diesel tank that's gonna sit underneath it first. But uh, yeah, that's why I ended up building the heating system this week. As far as next week, it would be really cool to get the exhaust figured out so I can actually install the heating system aboard Athena and start heating the boat. That would be luxurious. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of comments regarding my new heating system here, which I'm very excited about. I feel like there were a couple of things I wanted to mention that I might have forgotten to mention in this video, but uh, we'll see what pops up in the comment section. And that is gonna be the end of this video. Jürkul and I hope to see all of you guys back here in the workshop next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.